Uh, good evening. Um, I'm Hubert Kozak, a librarian here at the Burbank Public Library, and I want to welcome you to our program tonight, Meet the Writers Guild Foundation. You're going to find out tonight about the remarkable collection of scripts in the Writers Guild's Foundation Library, their archival collections, and the programs and resources they have for professional and emerging screenwriters. Uh, this is a chance, too, for working librarians and library school students to hear about one of the areas of librarianship in the entertainment industry. Um, tonight's program is one of occasional programs the library does that are part of our effort to connect people in Burbank and elsewhere with resources that might help them in getting skills and accessing resources. Um, resources that might be useful to them as they pursue careers in the entertainment industry. When you walk through the library, you find that everyone seated at the tables and cubicles seems to be working on something. They're working on a screenplay. It is pretty well known that everyone in Los Angeles is working on a screenplay. So having an event that gave people a chance to meet the Writers Guild Foundation seemed like it might be popular and perhaps useful. We are fortunate to have with us tonight some of the key staff of the Writers Guild Foundation. The chat is open, but please put your questions for our panelists in the Q&A. We encourage you to ask questions as we go along, as the panel will try to answer them at points where relevant topics come up in their discussion this evening. We'll reserve some time at the end to address questions that have not been covered. The program will last about an hour. I'll turn things over now to Enid Portuguese, who is the Director of Communications and Events at the Writers Guild Foundation. Welcome, Enid. Hello, thank you, Hubert, for that wonderful intro. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, we hope this will be a fun introduction to the work that the Writers Guild Foundation does. Um, if you are new to us, we are a nonprofit organization based in Los Angeles uh, at the Writers Guild of America West building on 3rd and Fairfax. Our mission is to preserve and promote the history and craft of writing for the screen. And everything we do is open to the public, including our library and archives, our events, our community outreach programs. We're gonna talk about all three of those areas today. Um, but if you have any questions, as Hubert says, please, drop them in the Q&A. We love questions. We don't want to just keep asking ourselves the questions. <laughs> so we'd love to hear yours. It can be about writing, about working in a library, about scripts, whatever your heart desires, we will try to answer it. Um, and yes, we will try to drop some resources in the chat as well, um, if we can do that. Uh, but first, let me introduce my colleagues. I'm going to go alphabetical order. Um, first, we have our librarian, Lauren O'Connor. Hi, everyone. And then we have our development manager, Lawrence Silvera. Hello. And our archivist, Hilary Sweat. Nice to be here. Yay. So I would love for you all to tell us what exactly you do at the foundation um, and what's what do you enjoy most about your job? Who wants to start first? I can start. Um, so, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, the Writers Guild Foundation has a library that is open to the public in the WGA West building at 3rd and Fairfax. Um, and we have over, I mean, almost, I would say, uh, 45,000 produced film and television scripts. And they say, the best way to become good at writing is to read a lot. Uh, so. Uh, my job as librarian is providing access to this huge collection of scripts uh, and my day to day is just kind of like working with writers and making sure they've got what they need. And um, I think what I like best about it is um, engaging and talking to writers at every single level, literally someone who comes in and is like, hey, do you guys have screenwriting for dummies? up to like some of the highest paid showrunners in the business, um, just getting to talk to all of them about process. Um, I find that very, very inspiring. And I think that's my favorite part of the job. Very cool. Lawrence? 
Yeah, uh, I am the development manager. And so we are a nonprofit, which means we are financially dependent on donations and grants and all sorts of stuff like that. And so that is my job, uh, procuring all those funds, processing donations, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and I think my favorite part about working at the Writers Guild Foundation is um, the people who work there and the work that they do. Um, often in selling our organization to donors, I have to be kind of a cheerleader for everything that we do. And so just to be able to learn about all the work that Lauren's doing in the library or Hillary's doing in the archive um, or with our community outreach programs or events, uh, it's just, it's really fun to be able to, to be the cheerleader for everyone. Hi, everybody. So as the archivist, I um, it's kind of a natural, natural fit with the library. Um, everything I deal with is the personal papers and the professional records from writers um, who have donated their, let's say, their body of work to us over the years, um, which just means lots and lots of paper and lots and lots of scripts. And um, and then also I we have some records from the early days of the Writers Guild, which has roots going back to 1920 um, and started officially as an organized labor union that collectively bargains in 1933. Um, and it's really just it, it, there we have so much from the history of the craft, all you know, a hundred years worth of of film history. Um, and the favorite, my favorite part of the job is uh, is research, maybe because I'm good at it, so I like it, but um, I really love connecting the dots for somebody that I'm helping. I love that I can help people and connecting the dots because I am like steeped in this every day is very satisfying and finding a needle in a haystack um, is really satisfying and it may, and it, you know, makes people happy and, and I'm, I've been helpful to them and that's what I'm here for. Very cool. And I, um, I oversee our communications. So our website, our weekly newsletter, which you should definitely sign up for because that's where we announce everything we do, um, as well as our social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, but I also program and produce our events, which are still currently virtual. Um, I And my favorite part of the job is that, is really curating conversations with writers, um, but also connecting them to other writers, whether they're talking together in a panel or watching a panel um, and hopefully being in person, you know, we can all share a room together and, you know, you can meet other writers and just building community because, you know, writing is such a solitary sport per se. And, you know, it's, it helps to, to know uh, other writers and to commiserate and share knowledge and um, insights. Um, so, since we are doing a, an event with the Burbank Public Library, I figured we should start talking about the library. Um, and yes, Lisa, Phoebe, it, it, we are open to the public. Anybody can just walk in. Well, not, you can't walk in right now. You have to make an appointment. <laughs> but yes, you do not have to be a Writers Guild member to uh, visit the library or the archive or any of our events. So yeah. Um, I can share. Uh... I mean, we can share the link for for where uh, where you make an appointment online on our website. Um, it's pretty easy, I like to think. Um, and then once you've got that, you can you can come on in and uh, read whatever your heart desires, um, as long as we have it. Um, which brings yeah. me to another point. Uh, we do have a catalog online. Um, there it is. Um, where. Um, you know, if, if you're curious about whether or not we have something that you're looking for, you can search the catalog in advance of coming in, uh, just so that your heart is not broken when you walk through the door, um, thinking that we have something and it turns out we don't, even though I think we, we do have a lot of stuff. There's, there's definitely something in our library that you'll probably want to read. Awesome. Um, so Lauren, can you kind of walk us through you know what people can expect when you when they visit the library yes um so it can be um because you're going in it's you know the the primary usage of the building is the guild it's not like a public library 
Um, so once you have an appointment, um, you basically kind of come in through the doors um, after you uh, struggle to find a parking place. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and and um, you'll, you'll uh, engage with security. Your name will be on a list. Right now, you have to be vaccinated and boosted to use the library. I don't know if that's going to change in the future, but that's the, what it is right now. Um, then they'll point you in the direction of the library. You come on in. You give me your name. We'll hopefully already have the scripts that you want to look at pulled for you. Um, and then it works kind of like the regular library where you just kind of find a seat and it's quiet and there's air conditioning and you can read or you can get work done. Um, and it's really um, the energy. I don't know if anyone um, on this event has, has visited the library before, but um, the energy in the room is very um, focused. Um, so if you're not working, you're going to feel like really bad about not working because you're just surrounded by all of these like amazing scripts and like people's writing accomplishments. Um, so you're like, okay, like I've got to put the pedal to the metal and write something. And everyone is like, like it's, I've, I've never like, I'm there every day and, and every day it's like, wow, like people are really focused in here. Um, so that's, that's kind of what you can expect. And also too, um, when you make an appointment, we, we ask you to kind of specify what you, what you'd like to look at, but, um, if it's, if it's your, um, if it's your first time, um, if it's your first time visiting the library, um, you know, we're more than happy to kind of show you around and, um, you know, um, help you find what you're looking for and and if you want to just kind of browse we, we do that too so what are some of the popular things um that people request like what do people like to read well currently i mean i'd say most of the people um most of the people who come in um it's it's people who are you know working on their spec scripts or you know just kind of trying to like learn uh learn the craft e even if they're like a little further along um, in their professional careers. Um, and, you know, they, they mostly want to read like current te television. So right now that's like Abbott Elementary, This Fool, Loot, uh, shows like that. And we have them and, uh, and, you know, features like everything everywhere all at once. Um, and, I, you know, I'd say that's, mo that's mostly what people, you know, um, want to look at, but they'll also, um, you know, uh, a, a lot of people want to read like classic scripts. Um, like we find that with films, um, that's, you know, uh, what people, people want to get into. What I love is that there's a couple of really great scripts, classic scripts that have, we have multiple drafts of. So I feel like if you're learning how to write, you can really see the evolution of a screenplay um, through some of the scripts that we have. I think that's pretty great and unique, you know, as well as the development materials. Yeah, uh, which... we also have, um, you know, it's not a lot. Like, I, I, I don't want to build it up too much because, you know, some people come into the library and think we have a show Bible for every series that's ever been created and it's not the case. Um, but we do have a collection of, you know, just like pitches and development materials and outlines and stuff um, that uh, you can, you know, you can look at to get a sense of if you have to pitch something or if you have to, you know, do an outline or like just to get an idea of what that looks like. And a lot of people find that really helpful. That's great. Um, Cami asks, um, are the screenplays bound in any particular way, like a book? Are they combined into larger anthologies? That's a very good question. Um, so um, in, the, in the beginning days of the library, they mostly collected just like award-winning scripts, like scripts that were nominated for Oscars and WGA awards. Um, and those are all bound to this day. Um, you know, all the award-winning scripts are bound um, kind of fancily. Um, and, and, you know, we try, we're running out of space. Um, you know, so a lot of stuff, you know, is in hardcover. Um, but um, older, like, or newer stuff, like I'd say from after like 2013, uh, when you come in and you, and you wanna look at Abbott Elementary, we're gonna give you an iPad um, and you take the iPad and it's got, you know, the whole first season and you just read the scripts on there. But what's great about the iPad is um, if, you, if you're coming into the library and you really wanna browse, 
Um, there's just tons of stuff, you know, that, that's, you know, like everything's kind of on there. So you can, um, you know, really browse that way. Very cool. Um, people are, someone asking, anonymous, are we able to copy scripts to take home and read later? Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, because we, um, while we are a library, we function a little bit more like a special collections archive um, in that uh, we are not the copyright owners of the materials that we have. Um, they are generously donated to us by various writers, studios, um, production companies, agents. We come, we come about them in a, in a myriad of ways, um, but we are not the owners. Um, and uh, we don't have permission from the studios to make those scripts um, available as copies or put them online. But you, when you come into the library, you are free to take as many notes as you want. So you can understand like the formatting and kind of like get it ingrained. Um, but yeah, we can't, we're, we're not able to give out copies. And Hillary, can you talk about the archive? What can people expect when they visit there and how do they access it? Yeah, it's, um, we function um, along the same lines with the library. You make an appointment uh, to visit. Sometimes people get in touch with me first if they have a really specific or deep question about like, you know, one, one title or one writer that they are doing a deep dive into. Um, we a lot of our collections because there's so much um paper and yes to answer somebody else in the the questions it is just a lot of paper a lot in eight eight and a half by eleven paper that we have um that come with there in brads basically and and a lot of it is stored off site so i do typically this the people that i'm helping um i do require advance notice to get the stuff from off, off site first of all um we uh the archival collections are cataloged in our catalog with like a a summary of what's in there because archival collections are different from library collections um a library public library or our shavelson web library is like everything in a catalog is each item has a catalog record um like any book in a library but with archival collections the way it's done is that you kind of um describe the entire thing as a unit in aggregate so i'm not going to write um i'm not going to catalog every letter that i have from every producer to every writer individually um but what i try to do is get the essence of everything and make a narrative summary and i can go into more of that um later if you want but what, what a, kind of people do people do typically visit the archive like yeah. who, who, so that who's was it idea. most useful for yeah so um I get the more in-depth research questions, and these will come from a biographer writing about a writer or writing about a director, or um, it'll come from a film historian um, or film professors who are researching something, you know, they're putting out scholarly work. Um, we get, I mean, aside from creative uh, artists who do who want to look at stuff specifically because it maybe relates to what they're working on or what they're envisioning, um, we get journalists who want to know about something old or something new. It doesn't matter. Just just there's some tidbit that they're after that we can help them with. Um, we got, we just we got just this week, and we have over the past few years gotten. A few, just one example I'll share. We've gotten a few requests um, from the Oxford English Dictionary because they do the work of like finding or, you know, discovering where our word usages come from. And sometimes it comes from a movie, or at least it can be documented in a movie screenplay because if a writer wrote it down, that means that it was a word at the time. So, so those are fun and just like totally random. I never know what's gonna, who's gonna call or walk through the door. Now we have a couple of questions about internships and the library and archive is probably only part of the foundation so far that does work with interns. So how does one obtain one of these internships and what do you do as an intern at the library or archive? We, um, Usually, I'm the one that that is supervising the interns, or Lauren and I tag team it. 
um, there's two kinds of interns every uh, summer. And I don't know if this is going to be applicable to everybody, but every summer we have been getting a grant through the LA County Arts um, Commission, which is wonderful. And we get a grant for a paid intern for an undergraduate student. Um, and usually it might be a film student or might not be, it just depends on the project that is going on that summer. Um, and then separately, I do take students who are getting their master's in library science. Um, I've been doing that for a while and it's usually processing an archival collection and, and quote unquote, getting your hands dirty. Um, and, you know, looking at a whole lot, a whole lot of paper basically. And, do, and doing a lot of research. So that is the way to get an internship is just emailing me basically or emailing the foundation and inquiring. Um, but usually most terms, I tend to have an intern. And it's been Do they great. have to apply anywhere through the LA County Arts? The, the LA County Arts Commission um, website, the job postings go up every like, May, I think, March. It's a summer internship. And uh, they have many, many postings for many nonprofit, arts nonprofits. Um, not not uh, not even a lot of libraries, a lot of theater companies and all kinds of groups. It's really great. And so they post every spring and then you just, um, so we're on there and you, you, you apply to my email, which is in there. Um, and you can go, if you're interested, you can always go on the website and look at the previous year's postings and get a sense of what's there. Great. Um, and I know we might have a couple of students um, watching, so it, who may be curious about how you both have become a librarian, you know, and especially with this specialty. So can you, can you both talk a little bit about your path, your career path? Do you want to go first, Hillary, or you go first? Um, okay. Um, so I, um, I actually like didn't know that I wanted to be a librarian or an archivist until a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Um, I was an undergrad studying screenwriting, um, and I, I saw a posting for an internship uh, at the Library of Congress. Um, in their um, motion picture recorded sound division um, and I applied for it and like not knowing what I was doing like or knowing anything about archiving like um, I got it one summer and I just sort of like realized that this was like a profession and um, and I just kind of kept that in the back of my mind um, when I came out here out here to LA and was kind of flailing um, and I was like you know maybe I maybe I like want to go to library school um, so I ended up doing the, it's, it's not really a program anymore. It's, it's kind of a specialty within their MLIS, um, program, but it was, it was called the, uh, the me ass program. Um, but people, a lot of, a lot of people made my ass jokes, <laughs> um, moving image archive studies. Um, uh, and I did that and, um, I worked a little bit in like video preservation, um, before coming to the foundation, but. Um, I think it's like, if there's anybody here um, who's studying, uh, who's in like library school or wants to pursue that, I think um, what really helped me was maintaining a certain level of um, subject interest, like, you know, just an interest in um, filmmaking and uh, particularly in writing. Um, and um, that sort of like, I, I, that, almost more than kind of like the librarianship skill has like opened more doors. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, how I came into it. Yeah, I do encourage everyone to check out our blog as well because Lauren has written many very, very useful uh, posts about, you know, from the fundamentals of writing a screenplay to, you know, formatting information on for television scripts to just analysis of scripts. I mean, we have a couple of years of posts um, that I think are super educational and helpful uh, from a practical level, even tips um, on how to apply to fellowships, I think, which is always really helpful. We've, as part of um, the library team also speaks with 
um, a lot of program administrators for the for fellowships in the spring. That's kind of one our one of our big focuses. So, you know, we we do have offer other resources and services um, such as that. Oh, Hillary, please share us your journey. Um, I. Uh, I went to film school, probably like a lot of people in uh, this part of the country, and I, um, you know, just worked for a few years and didn't really know what I was doing, or, or at least didn't have a clear vision of what I was doing, um, and I decided to get my master's in library science. I chose to go to the online San Jose State MLIS. Um, and I discovered in the first semester that I loved it, so I knew I was in the right right place. Um, and I worked after I graduated, of course, like, you know, I'm, I'm new in the field. I didn't have any library experience, so I realized I needed to get as much as I could. Um, I worked a number of like temporary and part time jobs. Um, one of the law firm library and a, and a like public library and uh, a small university library. I worked a lot of places, and and I think it was good experience really to just kind of figure out how everything works because it can be um, you realize the more you're in it, the more you realize that there's a lot to know. Um, and I happened to actually become friends with or had been in school with a woman who started the archive at the Writers Guild Foundation. She had also been in entertainment. Um, and so my story about working here is that it's in who, it's all about who you know, which I never thought I would know anybody. Um, but she was looking for another employee. And so she hired me and, um, and she's left and I became the archivist. And it's been really great to, to combine my love of, of film history and now television um, with being able to help people and doing research and managing information and data. So it's a really great combination of, uh, of things that I'm interested in. Now we have a couple of library related questions in the Q&A. Uh, where was one? That, how does the library decide which scripts to add to its collection? Is it only WGA covered productions? Ask I was Judith. just trying to type an answer, <laughs> to answer this question, but I'll answer it for everyone. Um, uh, so we, I mean, we try to get everything that we possibly can. Um, and it's, you know, and the way we go about it is we, um, we reach out to, you know, show creators and writers first. Um, and most of the, a lot, a lot of times we have good success with that. Sometimes we don't. Um, but we try to get everything that's everything that's current and popular and that people want to read that we're getting requests for. Um, we also use the uh, Warner Brothers Television Workshop list of accepted shows uh, to spec um, each year as kind of a, oh, we should have that. Um, and it's not, I would say like most of it is um, WGA covered um, productions just because that's, you know, what we kind of have access to. Um, but um, som sometimes we uh, we get other things, um, international stuff, like on occasion. Um, and we um, sometimes some like some of the organizations that give out awards like uh, like Humanitas and the WGA awards and stuff will give us um, you know, nominated, like, like their submissions, the nominated scripts. Um, uh, so yeah, that's how we go about that. Very cool. We'll get uh, back to the questions. But one other thing the foundation does is we um, have community outreach programs. We have two flagship programs, the Veterans Writing Project and the Writers Access Support Staff Training Program. Um, our programs manager, Kira, wasn't able to join us tonight, but Lawrence is going to give us the rundown on those programs. Lawrence, yes. what, what's the overview on these community outreach programs? Yeah, so uh, like Ian had said, our two flagship programs are the Veterans Writing Project and the Writers Access Support Staff Training Program. Um, the Veterans Writing Project we've been doing for about 10 years now, a little over 10, I think. Um, and it's for emerging writers with U.S. military backgrounds. 
Um, and so it takes place over the course of a year. Um, they start off with a big weekend long retreat where all the writers can meet each other, get to know what, who are in their groups and who their mentors are. Um, and then over the course of the year, they have different, um, they have a weekly basic course right after that with their uh, mentors who are WGA enrolled uh, writers. And then after that basic course is up where they learn kind of the fundamentals of writing, um, they have monthly follow-up workshops and special events throughout the year. And so um, over the course of the year, the, the writers work on their either feature like screenplay or a TV pilot. Um, and so the hope is at the end of the program in May, because uh, it starts in the summer, um, they have the finished product. And then they have what's called pitch night, which is where the writers can meet with a bunch of uh, industry executives, managers, agents, um, showrunners, and they pitch their, their projects. And so there have been a lot of different people who have been staffed from this. Uh, they've got a lot of different uh, screenplays produced. And so um, it's just a really great program for military veterans. And the Writers Access Support Staff Training Program is a new program that we started last year. Um, and it provides writers who are generally underrepresented in writers' rooms, um, identities like BIPOC, LGBTQ+, disabled writers, writers over the age of 50. Um, the, the goal is to provide writers from those identities with the tools and the skills needed to become a writer's assistant or a script coordinator since these positions are usually the first step into the, the writing world here in LA. Um, and so it's a 12 week course um, taught by Debbie Ezer and Clay Lapari, who are both um, well experienced in these uh, positions. And um, yeah, that's basically it. We're only in the second year, like I said. And so uh, we haven't had too many um, people go through it yet, but we do already have, I think 48 people were in the, the program last year and about half of those people are now staffed in those roles and so we've seen a lot of great success and as we continue to build the program um, I think it'll be it'll be really cool really great for people. Yeah so the applications for the VETS program usually opens at the top of the year I believe right. around January yep. and when does Writers Access it's usually spring? A little later than that yeah it'll, it'll yeah. probably be in the spring yeah March maybe. Yeah. yeah, keep an eye on the newsletter because that's where it'll be announced. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, we also have a visiting writers program. So if you are uh, a staff member at a college or a university for a writing program, you know, we also help connect those schools with writers. Do you want to talk a little bit more about visiting writers? Yeah. That one's been a lot of fun because um, I've, I've got to do a lot with that too. And basically what we do is we connect WGA enrolled writers with classrooms, both here in LA and around the country. And so if you are a college or university professor who would like a writer to speak to your students, um, let us know, it's all on the website. Um, they're usually one hour sessions and they're basically just Q and A's where your students get to ask writers of their favorite TV shows or their favorite movies questions about screenwriting. Um, and so it's a really cool program. We've had a lot of really cool writers be a part of it. Um, Rachel Bloom, David Coop, um, Ilana, Ilana Pena, um, just a really a lot of cool writers. Um, I would definitely recommend reaching out um, if you are a professor at a college or university or high school or elementary school. We had a request the other day from el uh, elementary school. So um, yeah, and we also have the volunteer and mentorship program, which is basically visiting writers as well, but it's for like other nonprofits um, who work with young people from underserved communities um, with literacy, writing, filmmaking. And we also pair WGA enrolled writers with those um, organizations. Um, and those range from one-time speaking engagements like visiting writers to a longer term kind of mentorship situation. We work with Get Lit, A26LA, the school district here in LA, um, all sorts of organizations. And so if you are a part of a nonprofit um, and would like to partner with us, um, the information on how to do that is on our website as well. Yes, we're all about building connections, connecting other writers to other writers that would, at 
any stage you're once you you're never too young to get into writing so <laughs> and we also host uh tons of events we usually host about two to three sometimes four events a month um on a busy month but those are also free and uh open to the public um, hopefully we can get back into an in-person. We used to host in-person events at the Writers Guild uh, West Building. Hopefully we can do that uh, in the next few months. But currently you can find us on Zoom. Um, you can check out our events page on our website for our, some upcoming events. Um, and th those are great. I have fun programming them. So I hope <laughs> people yeah. have fun. Uh, tell us tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's coming down the pipeline uh, in terms of uh, events that people can look forward to. In October, we have two very specific subject um, related um, panels actually we were partnering on october 4th we are partnering with the national domestic workers alliance and the topic is writing authentic stories about domestic workers so we have the show owners from fox's the cleaning lady speaking as well as molly smith metzler who's the showrunner of the netflix limited series made so they're going to talk about just how they were t they were able to create a story around a char these characters and how they, you know, avoided stereotypes and tropes, um, and as well as received consultations from experts in the field to, you know, accurately inform their storytelling. And then on October twelfth, we partnered with so we, we are partnering with Storyline Partners on an event on getting abortion storylines straight. So that features um, Erica Swafford. She's an executive producer on New Amsterdam. Krista Vernoff uh, from Grey's Anatomy and Paul Weitz, who wrote and directed uh, Grandma as well as About a Boy. And we have some subject matter experts. We have you know, a doctor a sociologist to give the policy and the medical information. And we have the writers to talk about how they use that information to create their, their episodes and their films. Um, we also have WG Festival, which is our annual writing conference coming up in November. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. That That's going to be both virtual and in person. There will be a few select in person um, events. So yeah, we have a busy, uh, two months ahead of us. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about um, just just in general, the kinds of programming that we offer? I mean, someone had a question about, you know, just workshops and um, just, you know, just topically, like what are what are the types of things people can uh, can expect to see when they uh, from our events? And also, um, it should be noted, um, pretty much all of them are on YouTube, like from from the beginning of the pandemic onward. And it yes. is drove. Um, we, we yeah, we've got to share that link. I just added that to the chat because please do check that out. We have hosted over a hundred virtual events since 2020, so there are tons of conversations, and there most of our events are around craft. So it's writers talking about their process. Every writer has a different process, surprisingly. Um, so there, you know, it's comforting in that there is not one way to tell a story. People have chosen different ways. Obviously there's structure, um, formatting that needs to, you know, be abided by, but there are so many ways to tell a compelling story, um, on screen. So it's great to hear from different, um, writers to how they got to where they are. Um, we also do occasionally panels on the business side of writing. So talking about, you know, finding a, a rep, um, learning about, you know, distribution and development, um, all of which are important for writers to know. Uh, we talk to a lot of writers rooms. I think that's my favorite by far is when we do an event with a writer's room because it's uh, an interesting insight. I feel like you don't really 
get from a lot of places, you know, I think a lot of show you hear from show owners, but to hear from an entire room to hear their process and to how they create a tell an episode of television is so fun and fascinating. Um, and it's great to see everybody's, you know, chemistry and how, you know, hear the stories. Um, so those are the types of events that we do. We just, we love to just put two writers together and have a conversation about what they do. That's kind of the essence. I want to jump in too with a plug um, for, for two other um, kind of series and topics that we kind of jump into sometimes just because like I moderate them so they're fresh in my uh, in my <laughs> uh, in my head but we, we do um, an ongoing series called research methods for writers um, where you know we talk ad nauseum about um, you know how to get words on the page and how to structure everything and how to develop characters but um, doing um, intense levels of research are like super, and that's, that process is often kind of like shrouded in mystery. So um, we have a couple of, if you check out the YouTube page, there's a couple of um, just conversations with writers around their research process, which I think is like super useful and super fascinating. And the other one that I think is worth checking out um, is we have uh, what's called WGF Library Script Breakdown where um, we'll sit down with, you know, uh, uh, one of, an early one that we did was with Bill Lawrence, where we, where we sat down with the pilot script of Ted Lasso, and we literally broke it down with him. Um, and, there's, and there's a few of those on there. Um, I, I think the most recent one we did was with um, Sean Hader and Coda, um, where we just kind of like break it down scene by scene. And it's like really, really a fascinating insight into the writer's process. Um, so I couldn't let this moment pass without telling you about those. <laughs> yes, check out everything Lauren has moderated because she's a fantastic moderator. And, you know, those, all those topics are super interesting and have, educational. Do you have a particular like, my, my last question for you, like, do you have a particular <laughs> favorite, favorite event that you have ever done in your? You know, I don't have one, honestly, I, but I do love all, all the inside the writer's room events, you know, for in person, we did one with Russian doll at the Writers Guild Theater mm -hmm. that had Amy Poehler, uh, Natasha Leone, you know, Leslie Headland and all the writers. And it was just such a fun, funny conversation, uh, but also really interesting because it's such a complex show. So to hear them talk about like how they dealt with timelines and just philosophical, metaphysical questions. I mean, but at the same time, like had you belly laugh, like that is just the, the goal, I think for all our events. Um, and then just even virtual events, like you, don't think that you would get that magic on a screen, but you know we had a phenomenal one with the writer's room of a black lady sketch show, which thank God is on YouTube because that <laughs> is, was one of my favorites by, you know, by far. So it's, yeah, I just kind of love the big groups of writers coming together and, and talking. But yeah, I'm sure there's tons of other events that I forgot. Sure. For sure. Like but the one we did with good. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> I was bitter because yeah. I wasn't there, but um, yes, that's also on YouTube. So if you like the show Queen Sugar, we did an event at the Arclight um, with Ava DuVernay, uh, the writers of Queen Sugar, the stars, and it was moderated by Oprah. I was very sad to miss it. <laughs> Let's see. And of course, you know, a great, a big part of what we do requires fundraising. Um, and there's, that's another way to get involved with the foundation. Lawrence, if you can chat about ways to support us. Sure. Yeah. If you are watching now and you're really liking what you're hearing and are inclined to contribute, um, the best way to support the Writers Guild Foundation is to just go to our website and make a donation. Um, but there's also ways to donate monthly. You can sign up for a monthly giving program and uh, those members uh, get discounted tickets to ticketed events sometimes um, and other perks as well. So that's a really great program. Um, we also have different programs like the Ralph's Community Contributions Program where if you shop at Ralph's 
every purchase you make, um, a portion of that goes back to us or Amazon Smile, which is the same thing, but with Amazon. Um, so yeah, if, you're, if you like what you hear tonight and are inclined to contribute, those are great ways to do it um, on our website. Um, if you go onto our website and read some of our blog posts and are inclined, the YouTube channel, um, if you come to visit the library and uh, enjoy what you read, uh, definitely please contribute. Thank you. Hey. All right, let's dive back into the Q&A. Uh, we have 15 minutes left, so we wanna make sure we answer your questions. Uh, we do have questions about kind of the 12-week writer's program, you know, how would one qualify with no experience um, for the writer's access um, support staff program? Writing uh, experience is not necessary. You know, it's a very competitive prog program because we have few slots and we've had up to, what, 2,000 apply. Um, but, you know, hopefully that'll change. <laughs> we can open up more slots soon. Yeah, and, and everything on um, the website uh, outlines what's required for the application. And so I believe there might be a writing sample, but there's also a resume and, and, um, and other application materials. You can find everything on the website. Yes, because they are, you know, it is a training program and it is just kind of the, you know, support staff. So, you know, we, we don't require people to have, you know, written a screenplay or have tremendous writing experience since you're really just working your way up through the, the ladder and we'll, and we'll train you. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Do we offer tours of the library and archive? Um, yes, um, if you have a, um, a, a group, um, we are able to accommodate tours sometimes on Mondays when we are not open to the public, um, you know, that way we can kind of like, you can kind of have the space and, and check it out. Um, but it's, it's mostly, um, you know, we kind of, that's kind of reserved for, um, uh, group, you know, groups of students, um, larger writers groups um, and organizations. Um, so if you have one of those, um, email us um, and we can we can work something out. But I mean, if you're talking, you know, if you personally just want to be shown around the library, make an appointment and say that you want to consult with the librarian and you want to be, you know, you just want to see the library. We'll do that. No problem. We can also, um... Uh, I mean, since it seems like there's some librarians in the group, we also could, you know, have a behind the scenes tour for a group of library students, no problem. I um, would love that. Yeah, I know, we get to geek out. And we did, before the pandemic, have, um, let's not forget our second graders, and they're so cute, and they would come into the library, and we'd do an activity with them, and it was the highlight of the month. Um, but yeah, any group of, um, a group of students basically of any any type uh tyler wants to know is there any access to writer's notes and or outlines uh, uh i yes um but it's you know again like it's not like you know like you can't say come in and say like oh uh i'm looking for a treatment for you know, such and such movie. It's more just kind of like what, just give me any outlines or notes that you have um, and we can kind of hook you up with, with stuff. Um, you know, I, I think some people just think like, um, you know, oh, they must have note cards from like every movie. And it's like, we don't, um, <laughs> but, um, but we do have some cool stuff. And if you're interested in um, the, like outlines and the, the pre-writing process, um, we definitely have some cool stuff. Yes, and what if, what and the, our library team is so great at making re recommendations for things. If you're writing, say, a horror script, you know they are so great at giving you, you know, materials and scripts to look at to help you. You know, especially if you give if you give them very specific uh, details about what you're working on, that also helps in their recommendations. You, you know even if we don't have the exact thing that you're looking for, they can definitely point you in the right direction. Are you currently working with any historians? Um, 
yeah, I'm always working with somebody who's doing something, uh, you know, really specific. Like today I was um, uh, working and preparing for a visit, a guy who's who wrote the book on Columbo. Um, and his book came out uh, last year and he's gathering more notes for it. So I'm just giving him, or he's gonna gonna look at um, Columbo scripts and notes and and outlines for an episode that was not made, but went through the script process. Um, Columbo is very popular actually, believe it or not. People still really wanna know about Columbo. Um, and, I mean, I can't, I, a lot of um, PhD students, there was a woman who is writing a scholarly article about, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know, she's a film historian and she's writing about her, um, an aspect of television and um, reproductive rights, actually. So we were kind of, I was sharing um, some stuff with her and all, all kinds of requests. It's like, it's so cool. It's one of the fun things. It's such a variety and such a random thing and I always learn something new every day which is really cool um and oh great question how do we sign up for the newsletter um <laughs> well, if you if you visit our website there should be a pop-up where you can sign up for it um, but you can also access it on our home page I believe it's at the very bottom you can subscribe to our mailing list but hopefully that pop-up will will uh, work for you um all right last any last remaining questions these were great um thank you all so much for joining oh wait do you have resources for marketing a script um outside of just like um pitch documents and pitch decks not really i mean I, like uh I mean, I, which pitch decks are sort of like the marketing materials for a script. Um, so we have those, yes. And hopefully we can, you know, do an event where we do, we do, we do tons of events on pitching. We also check out our YouTube uh, channel for ones that we've already done before. Um, that's always a great um, skill to learn. And we always try to we revisit that topic every, you know, couple of months or so. Um, so yeah, and stay tuned for any upcoming um, events on pitching. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us to this evening. Um, we hope this was helpful. You know how to reach us. Go to wgfoundation.org. Um, you can find all our information there. Thank you to the Burbank Public Library for hosting us. And if you yeah. have um, library specific questions, I'm just putting our library email in the chat, um, which is, and if you're watching this after the fact, that's library at wgfoundation.org. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thanks. Um, I th our thanks for, to all of you uh, for attending tonight's program. Your questions were great. Thank you very much. You really helped make the event. Um, my thanks to Enid for her interest in working with us and making this event with us possible tonight, and to Lauren, Lawrence, and Hillary for their participation in this panel. You all did a great job, and it's apparent what a great team you are uh, to work with. Uh, very impressive. Um, the library thanks the friends of the Burbank Public Library for the support of the library's public programming. Everyone will be sent a link in the next few days of a recording to tonight's program. We hope you'll share it with friends and colleagues you might think might benefit from watching tonight's discussion. And there was a lot of information in there, so that's great. Um, please uh, help us serve you better by taking the time to fill out a very short survey. It's really short. That will come up after we sign off. We value your opinion. It will help us improve our programming. Thanks very much. Good night.